Well, the time has come, everybody. It is 2024. We are what? We are live with the community. This is the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Development bi-weekly call. This is our first call of 2024. Guess who's back? Yes, we're back. Back again. And so excited. So let's talk about what we're going to talk about. We've got updates on the community. We've got our PNP.NET libraries, PowerShell, Yo! Teams, Microsoft Teams Toolkit. And did somebody say samples, script samples, team samples, power platform samples, all the samples, all the time, we are here for you. And then of course, everybody's favorite time, picture time with Together Mode, and I already see it's working, Vest is already ahead of the game and got it ready for us. And then we're gonna have three incredible presenters of the day. Kevin is here to kick us off with building an Ignite custom co-pilot. Anea is going to show us using Microsoft Forms to get all submitted answers at once, a plethora of answers all at once. I'm so excited. And then John and Mike are here to show off Just Ask It Consultants Toolkit with OpenAI and Model Driven Apps. So we have got a cornucopia of content for us today. But first, let's talk about the resources that are available to each and every one of you from our fantastic community. We've got videos, YouTube accounts uh, that provide a multiple amount of information for us from the community, from Microsoft. We've got LinkedIn groups for discussions. We've got open source projects and initiatives. And I mentioned those sample galleries, so many samples, all so many samples for us to utilize, to learn from, to build from, to collaborate with. It spans the spectrum, team samples, SPFX samples, power platform, list formatting, the list, <laughs> see what I did there, goes on and on and on. So take advantage of those samples because we want you to be able to utilize the technology to the best of your ability and collaborate with others in the community. And all you gotta do is remember every single one of these URLs by heart, there'll be a test at the end. No, 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 I'm just kidding. AK.ms slash community slash home, that is your key, that is your access to all of these resources that are 100% free. So don't hesitate to take advantage of them. Now you're here, why? Because you like community calls and we like community calls and we got more for you. So our Tuesday Microsoft speakers call, that's a weekly call everybody and it is back on the 9th of January. That is next week, next Tuesday. Uh, we'll see that agenda here in the moment but it is back from its winter break uh, and we're gonna be coming out of the gate live and hot with some awesome information. We've got our monthly community call for Power Platform that happens on the third Wednesday of every month that is coming up two weeks from yesterday. Office add-ins, We've also got the Microsoft 365 Power Platform Community Development Call, which you're on right now, just in case you didn't know. And then the Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework, those are the sibling calls. Those are every Thursday. Rain, sleet, sunshine, darkness, it doesn't matter. We're here for you, and it is an awesome call. Now, let's talk about that agenda for Tuesday. John Miller is going to be here talking about what's new in Microsoft Teams Toolkit. Nick and Kwashif are going to be here talking about building collaborative apps quickly on Microsoft 365 and SharePoint embedded with Fluid Framework 2.0. Rolls right off the tongue, but it's going to be awesome. And our favorite Gary Trinder is going to be here extending Copilot from Microsoft 365 with plugins. So take advantage of getting access to that invite. You can do that at aka.com ms slash community slash ms speakers dash call dash invite dash all that kind of stuff you don't gotta remember that because we had it on the screen for you and you can get access to it by going to the link in the chat so download those invites and we will ensure that you are going to have a great time and as you're on these calls, you may be thinking, I got some cool stuff to show off. I have favorite features and there's new things that I want to show that I've learned how to use that are valuable to me. Guess what? We want you to. So everyone is welcome to present a demo on these calls. Please do not overthink this or hesitate to think, ah, I've got to show off a flux capacitor, which is what makes time travel possible. No time travel necessary. We just want you to show off your passion, cool tips, tricks, unique situations that you found a useful ca uh, user case for or use case for. Don't hesitate to let us know. You can fill in this form, ak.ms slash community slash request slash demo. Fill out that form. It's a simple one. Just lets us know what it is that you want to talk about. Let us know if you would like to buddy up with someone. We'll cover that as well. We can match you up with someone in the community, an MVP or an experienced presenter, and you'll work together on it. So if it's your first time, which we've got a couple today, we're super excited. Take the lead, follow their lead, and do not hesitate to get involved. We promise it's going to be a great time and you'll enjoy it. Now, if you're looking for guidance on a number of these initiatives, we are excited because our office hours are going to be starting up next week for Sharing is Caring. And in case you didn't know, Sharing is Caring is a program that provides hands-on guidance. We've been working on scaling this, finding new and exciting ways to get you all involved. Uh, so 
be on the lookout for that to debut next week. We're excited for that. Office hours, uh, videos. We're going to be working on new sessions as well that are going to be uh, scheduled a little bit more uh, frequently so that you can take advantage of these sessions. They are hands-on. They are live. They are safe space, so they're not recorded. Uh, and we are excited for what 2024 is going to bring. Uh, keep an eye out at ak.ms slash sharing is caring. And of course, once you have contributed to the community, we want to recognize you. Uh, but 2023 is over. So away goes those 2023 badges and in comes 2024. New opportunity for everyone to earn these badges. It is powered by Credly. Uh, yes, that same Credly that makes those accredited and official badges. We partner with them at no cost to you to recognize the work that you're doing. We have almost just over a thousand uh, opted in for this program. So if you have not, we more than welcome you, ak.ms slash community slash recognition. Just provide us your contact information along with your GitHub. We'll track the amazing work that you're doing in the community, and then we'll recognize you. We've got so many new badges coming out for 2024, uh, as well as all of the oldies but goodies, community contributor, and all the program ones are going to be coming back. We're refreshing those in Credly right now. So it is absolutely no cost, and we are building out those achievement levels too. So get involved. We would uh, love to recognize the work that you're doing. All right, let's get into some project-specific updates, and we're going to start with PNP.NET libraries with Bert. Awesome. Thank you, David. Um, so for the .NET libraries, uh, we had some updates, even it was like a, still a holiday season, but uh, nevertheless, some good updates. Uh, on the framework side, uh, Conrad uh, did two PRs, one to add a list deleted users utility method, kind of be able to list deleted users by Azure AD. And he also did uh, extend our enum with built-in field IDs. It's always kind of catching up on those built-in field IDs. Uh, but uh, if everyone adds new fields, then we'll keep up to date with that one. On the cross decay side, uh, nothing, nothing really major happened. We had some uh, kind of log cleanup. Uh, we were kind of flooding logs with, with uh, access token request messages. Now that's being fixed. Um, what else? Think overall, think usage is. is Really high, uh, actually super high. Uh, we think we, we beat our highest number, almost 50 billion requests in December last year, uh, which is amazing. And uh, also uh, see on the bars, the ratio cross decay framework uh, is like 10% is cross decay now. So that usage is also steadily growing, uh, which is good. And that's it from my side. Over to PowerShell. Awesome. Thank you. 50 billion, by the way. I feel like we need like a Dr. Evil. <laughs> 50 billion. That's incredible. <laughs> incredible. All right. Yes. Let's move over to PowerShell where Todd is celebrating even with his wet feet and his uh, pipes that are leaking. Got him. Tell us what we got. Yep, uh, in PNP PowerShell also, uh, SharePoint Embedded is the new flavor of the season. So we added a bunch of commands, uh, commandlets related to that. So you have container type configuration, retrieving the deleted container, removing the container, as well as the, the commands that we added related to these SharePoint Embedded uh, stuff. Uh, we also added an in interesting command, which is merge PNP term command and also uh, convert PNP file command. So you can use uh, that particular command to convert files into PDF files or Particular any particular docu uh, any particular extension that you want. So we use the PNP Core SDK uh, under the hood, uh, which is what the uh, which is what Bird worked on. So that's something that is quite interesting and might be helpful for, for a lot of people. Uh, we also fixed this uh, Grant PNP Azure AD app site permission commandlet uh, to make it work in multi geo environments. Uh, what next? Um, yep, uh, usage is keeping quite steady, and we'd absolutely love to hear from you on the discussion forum as well as on the issue list. So feel free to reach out to us. Thanks. What do you, David? Awesome, thank you, got him. And by the way, we still have a PowerShell uh, badge, everybody. So definitely take advantage of getting involved there and help out so you can earn that awesome badge. All right, let's move over to flying away Teams Toolkit with John. Thanks, David. Uh, so welcome back. Uh, we have 5.4 available in VS Code. Uh, so there's a bunch of new templates there. Um, there's a way to preview adaptive cards. Um, you can create Copilot plugins, and we have a new preview for 17.9 coming out soon. So when preview 3 launches, there'll be support for .NET 8 in our templates. So you'll see some updates related to that, and the previewers available there, um, bringing a lot of the features from the VS Code toolkit over to VS. So you'll continue to see us do that with the app test tool and the YAML actions, et cetera, um, and same for the CLI. So you'll see some updates in there. So continuing the quality of life improvements in the CLI. 
and we're focusing on more Copilot plugins, the simplified message extensions, and improving side loading. So you have, if you have, want to chat about that or have feedback, um, there's a link there. You can uh, schedule some time to talk to me. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, John. Uh, and speaking of our favorite way to access Graph, let's talk about Microsoft Graph Toolkit with Seb. The wow, Seb. It took, yeah, yeah. It took like 50 <laughs> minutes to unmute. Um, good. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, the Graph Toolkit has been very, very, very busy in the holiday season. Um, you can see by installing our next package that we're coming very shortly with a new V4. Um, our new major release of the Graph Toolkit that brings a ton of improvements around our React story, bundle size, but also we're adding some really, really cool capabilities like, for example, bringing you React documentation for folks that are building with React and not just with web components. So lots of work uh, that is going uh, uh, to happen. I'll be presenting um, later this month on the 23rd, I think, about all the new capabilities that are there. But until then, we need your help. Please come to our repo, aka.ms slash MGT. Come uh, share your feedback, um, create new issues if you're having some problems, if you're uh, seeking for help, come talk to us. We'd love to be able to help you build your next uh, graph-powered app. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Seb. And as a spoiler alert for everybody, 2024 is bringing an MGT badge. So be on the lookout for that. Definitely excited for that one as well. Let's move into script samples with Paul Bullock. Yeah, thank you, and Happy New Year, everybody. So uh, we have absolutely no new scenarios to share with you this year, but uh, uh, that's that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with that <laughs> from a maintenance perspective, get a bit of recharge time, and I'm hoping my contributors are probably uh, like just relaxing or writing these mega scripts ready for a, a series of PRs coming through, which is super, super cool. Um, but yeah, so script samples, just for those of you that don't know, is, is a PowerShell library, uh, sorry, not a PowerShell library, a, um, a repository for sharing uh, PowerShell script uh, from different sets of tools such as PMP PowerShell, SPM Management Shell, CLI, and so forth with the community. And as part of that uh, contribution, we've got a badge system. So we've got one, two, three star rated badges, uh, which is super, super cool. And uh, if you need help getting started with contributions <clears throat> or you're stuck, then feel free to reach out to me via LinkedIn or Twitter uh, as my as my primary DMs. Um, so I, I'm happy for, for that. So thank you very much for all your contributions over the last year. We've had so, so many, which is so, so cool. So I look forward to the uh, uh, the, the new year coming forward. Uh, back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. I hope someone is actually working on something titled Mega Script so that when you announce it, you can be like, welcome to this Mega Script. Mega like, Script. Like, mega <laughs> Script. Awesome. All right. Let's move into some Microsoft Team samples with Bob German. Hey, so happy new year, everybody. Um, we don't have any new samples. We're just getting back from the holidays. There's a couple interesting looking ones in the uh, pipeline, however. Um, and meanwhile, you can find all the scripts at this URL, aka.ms slash Teams app samples. Um, please, if you've got a cool app or an app idea, just uh, I'd love to have some more contributions. And I'll see you all next time. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thanks, Bob. Uh, and also, don't forget, everybody, I think you've all heard a little something called Copilot, right? I don't know. It's somewhere out there. But if you haven't and you're just learning about it, the Power Platform Prompts repo is alive and well and is there to assist you with how to use that wide open space of awesomeness. So uh, take advantage, take a look at it. We're making some improvements here and excited for what everyone's been contributing. We'll have some some new speakers on the Power Platform topics here coming soon that's been helping with the repo next uh, in the next calls. So definitely be on the lookout for that. You can check all that out at aka.ms slash Power Platform Prompts. All right, it is that time. Picture time. So get those cameras turned on. Yeah, I'll share my screen and let's see how pixelated we are today. It's not looking too bad, actually. A bit, a bit. Let's hope for it's getting a bit more brighter. I can see Bill in the second row. Oh, now it went pixelated. Uh, Leon over there. Are you Leon still in New Zealand? Yes or no? Thumbs up, thumbs up. No, not anymore. Okay, so you had a nice flight flight back from New Zealand. That's a small trip for the holidays. Cool. I guess we are maxed out. And Kevin, nice cap. That's Copilot cap, right? There we go. I think we are good. I think we are hitting the 50 people maximum as well. Let me put the recording on. Let's do some hand waving, everybody, uh, for 
for 2024 and it went immediately pixelated. No, don't do this to us. <laughs> the year of the pixel. It's the year, <laughs> year of the pixel, 2024. <laughs> oh, how did that happen? That's crazy. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> we'll craft a GIF animation regardless. We can see people waving. That's all good. We can't recognize anybody, but that's all good still. Awesome, awesome. We'll do this within the upcoming calls as well. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. I think a lot of us are actually feeling blurry. I think that's what's going on. Yeah, that might be the case. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> well, there's a song about that bl blurry face. Right? Okay, let's get into our amazing presenters. Kevin's going to kick it off, building in a night custom co-pilot. Man, right out of the gate, custom co-pilots, right? Kevin, take it away. Thank you very much. So I'll bring my screen off. Uh, okay, you've seen the co-pilot cap now. I can take that off, I think, uh, and go on there. So today I'm going to be talking about how you can build a custom copilot and the custom copilot I'm creating is about how you can take all the videos or the amazing content from Ignite and turn that into actual knowledge. Um, I'm not going to spend too long on this screen because I know I'm going to overrun here already, but this is the first chance I've had to talk about my new role uh, recently moved within Avenard to look over the overall copilot strategy from the modern work perspective moved into the center of AI. So very excited about that and first chance I've had to talk about it. So I'm going to sneak that one in there as well. But let's talk about what co-pilots are, because a lot of what I'm going to show you, some of you'll be thinking, well, hang on a sec. You're just showing a little bit of AI stuff and it's not really a uh, kind of co-pilot itself, but really a co-pilot is anything that helps support you. It's your colleague that can sit next to you. It's your assistant using AI. It will check your stuff. It will edit. It will help you recap. It is that little person that sits next to you. No, not a real person, but a little person that sits next to you and helps you there. If we talk about the ecosystem, and again, this is another slide I've been trying out with people. So let me know if you uh, feel this helps at all um, on there. It's still a work in progress, and I've just noticed that Dynamics has gone onto a second line, darn it. But there's so many different ones. I know Donna Sark has been talking about there being 156 different co-pilots. There's all these different ones uh, out there. They're available that you can take off the sh shelf. You can go and watch Gary Trinder's session next week to find out how you can extend those. But what what we're talking about today is more of those point solutions. You've got a specific scenario where you're looking to achieve something and you've got the Copilot Studio, you can do that, or you can build in with Azure and those Azure OpenAI ones within that. I love Kevin Scott. I think it was Build last year. He talked about his podcast, Custom Copilot, where he dropped his podcast in there. It would transcribe it. It would do all the things. It would go and look people up, uh, summarize it, and publish that up. That's the kind of copilots we're talking about. So I wanted to build something like that. And it's always good to have a real challenge on there. And the challenge for me was ignite and i just lost track of so much content there's so much stuff that comes through there's so much available that you can watch and actually loads of it last time was about ai <clears throat> and it kind of got me thinking could i use ai to digest all that knowledge and i actually set out a challenge and um uh, speaker of uh, co-host of the co-pilot connection web uh, podcast i know paul bullock uh, he joins that uh, challenge that i put out there to build something and maybe i'm going to convince him to come and speak on the show about that but i also wanted to do it a little bit myself as well so how did i go about doing that and sorry if I keep looking down, I'm uh, keeping an eye on the chat uh, on my phone at the same time um, on that. Steps I use, there is actually an Ignite API. You can see a few um, people have put it out on GitHub, but you can go and get that and get a list of the sessions that have come through and actually work on those. So you can get that list of sessions and get that list of the videos. So I got something that could go to that, pull that information out and put that up into Azure storage so I could do something with it. I then wanted to transcribe it, so to actually batch process that. And I'll talk about some of the uh, fun and games I have with that. Uh, then add that to a search index. So given all that content that was there, I wanted to be able to index it and then find a way to bring those results to actually be able to query and do things with it. 
some of the tools uh, that I was kind of used and considered and in some cases decided didn't quite work for me uh, on there, the Azure speech. So that gives you that transcription. Could have used the new Whisper Sync, uh, not Whisper Sync, uh, that's the Amazon one. Uh, the Whisper that's available in Azure OpenAI, there's different ways you could have transcribed. I decided to keep it simple with that, with the Azure speech that's there. There's the AI search, formerly um, cognitive search, uh, as part of the Azure ones that allowed me to kind of index that content um, within there. I was using Logic Apps for a lot of the heavy lifting because much as I love Power Automate, I love that ability to kind of keep it all within um, Azure. And, and also, I love flipping over to that JSON mode so you can actually kind of copy and paste bits of code within there. Um, added some cognitive services. Really, that was primarily linked in with the AI search, and I'll show uh, a little bit of that. It just extracted some of the information. So I, I needed to bring that in to exist, but was just using that within the search itself. Obviously, as your open AI, uh, AI within there. And then the ways to visualize some of this and get access to the content, I actually looked at um, Teams AI and Copilot Studio as well. So trying out the two different things on. And I'll be honest, I was trying not to, but I ended up keep falling back to PowerShell because it cost me a lot less money from that. But because so many of you want to see the techie stuff, I'm not going to disappoint you and show you some of the things within Azure that I've got. Uh, actually, I'm going to start off because my notes were wrong um, with a little bit of code. Let's uh, bring up the script. Um, just want to show a little bit of this. Um, where's the one that I want to bring up? This was a uh, available from someone else and I've lost. There we go. That's what I was looking for. That is the Ignite uh, API that you can call. You need to be registered. You need to uh, authenticate with that. But once you've done that, you can call that API and get a list of the sessions. So I've got a little script here um, I took. Um, I will put out in the uh, chat afterwards because I just remembered I forgot to give that to Paul Day. David, uh, in terms of the links, let me just shrink that down. Um, this is an available script that's out there on GitHub. I use this to kind of download those sessions. So I pulled it to a directory, um, pulled out those different elements. And the only thing I changed from the original script was instead of saving it locally, I got it to push it straight up to the Azure storage as well. And I think this ran overnight, um, was relatively quick, didn't come up with any errors, captured all the ones where there was a recording available. Uh, do go and nag people to get those recordings up. Uh, it gave me a report and I had those up in Azure after that. Next, I took these and you can see as part of the speech studio that I'm in. So this is part of the uh, Azure speech. This is batch speech to text. There's a few other nice things that looking at uh, while I was preparing this, this live chat avatar popped up. So there's kind of newer things appearing in this all the time. You can um, bring in some kind of real time speech to text and build that into your app. But I ended up looking at this batch speech to text within there. And there's a nice CLI, there's sample code so you can call all this. But because it's a studio, you've got the different files within this. And if my machine behaves, let's see if that uploads. So I recorded a, a very short video um, for Women in Security recently. You can see you can literally drag those files across. It will process that and build out the transcription. Just while that's going, I'm going to show some of the ones in there. It's some some of the challenges I've faced with this is the speaker diarization So uh, as you can see from this, this is separating out the speakers. So when you get that transcription, you can see the different conversations from different people going on. Unfortunately, I found that it didn't work with stereo and most of the uploads seem to use stereo. So it meant that it would just fail from that. And I will be honest, I haven't tried this file while that's processing um, on there as well. So it may fail from the same thing if I turn that on. Uh, and it's only me speaking, so there wouldn't be much point on that as well. You can see you can bring some profanity filter mode in there. So if uh, someone's getting a bit sweary, you can um, mask that and bring on the different punctuation. You've got a few fairly basic uh, items that you can put in terms of transcription uh, as well. Oh, look at that, it's finished just in time. Um, you will notice there is a free trial, so you can do five audio files per batch job and one minute per audio file, so you can try a few different things out. And I know it says audio file there, but you can put videos into this um, and it will bring that uh, up. I didn't make up the word diarization. Look, it's there. 
Microsoft made it up, yes, but I didn't, I promise. So here you can see it's it's pulled that information out. Uh, I mentioned it in stereo, so you can see the two channels. Um, I never worked out why you'd have two different people saying different things in stereo, but there we go um, from there. More importantly, if you look at the JSON, you can see what comes back and you can see the source. You can see those combined phrases. You'll see the different bits that come through there. So you'll see this one is all lowercase, kept very simple within there versus the full display one that's got all the punctuation, all the different elements. So you've got different ways of putting through that uh, JSON. And there was my first challenge. So let's just jump over to the um, item. Oh, no, before I go on to that, I just want to show the logic app. So while I dropped all those files into there, I obviously then had to process those. And the way I decided to process that was just have a job. I just had this manually triggered that would retrieve the list of sessions from the uh, Ignite API and would write those. And if we can bring those out, you can see they would actually get a list of each of the sessions. It would get the download, add that to the storage. Um, it would get the link. And you can see with Logic Apps, there is that transcription with, with that speech. So when you've set up those your AI speech, you can give it a key and you can actually get it to transcribe that and write those items out into a transcription. So I had a big Logic App that processed through and ran overnight again very nicely. And I will jump over to the browser. Let's have a look at some of the storage in there. So you can see I've created a different things. I had the Ignite content. I've cleared a lot of that down just to save me a bit of cost on there. And then I had the transcriptions that have come through. So here I've got a list of the transcriptions. You get a nice file with a report on success. Let's have a uh, look at that uh, later. But really, it's this main one that's at content URL underscore zero dot JSON. That is the file that you saw in that speech studio that brings that thing out. Now, oh, Leon, very good timing in your questions there. How much does this cost? Well, if you're lucky, you, you have a nice subscription and you've maybe got a hundred and forty pound limit. Um, you hit that very quickly if you try and process all these. I believe this cost me about two hundred and fifty dollars just to run that transcription. Now, I had a limit on there. So uh, as soon as it burned through my um, free sub subscription amount on there, it stopped. However, at the end of the month, I then got a charge for the extra bit on there. So I'm currently having a little bit of a debate with support around how these uh, limits pick up there. So uh, you, you'll hear at the end of this, uh, I can do it for less. Uh, thank you, Ineo. I'll, I'll hold you off on that for next Ignite. Um, I, I haven't published this yet because I want to get to the bottom and make sure that I'm not pushing something out there that will suddenly use up everyone's subscription and push through from there. But I am looking to publish something similar to this that will will work in a similar way without burning through your credits very, very quickly. But that is your big lesson to learn from this is to watch that out. Um, now, given those reports, the other one was I wanted to transform those transcriptions into Word. I had that JSON, but I didn't want to just put that JSON into the search index. Uh, I did try that, but the results really weren't very good. So I decided to pull that back uh, and instead, again, wrote a logic app that would go through, process through each of those uh, uh, content URL zero dot JSON files. You can see I've listed out those blobs within there. I've gone through each of those loops and actually pulling that out. Um, oh, there we go into this one and passing that transcript and creating that into a word file and then uploading that word file into the blob. Again, I hit a problem with this. The limit of the logic app, I couldn't put, um, you can see here I'm looping through each of those uh, items. I've pulled that recognized phrase. The transcription files were too big. And when I was putting into this variable, it was failing because it had too much in there. So I moved away from that and instead went back to good old trusty PowerShell um, within there. So here you can see I'm just getting that blob contents using the uh, PowerShell um, module um, for Azure, getting a list of the blobs, extracting those, saving those locally. Um, where have I got to on there? 
no, it's further up. Yeah, there we go. Getting the blob contents um, because that was stored as uh, a JSON. Um, I could take the JSON element from that, pump that all out to another location and then upload that back up into the Azure storage as well. So I could go grab that content and just upload back. I go back to the storage there. Here you can see just the text file that just had that list of text. Then I've got a nice, easy location that I can jump ahead and you'll see there's this button of import data. So I can import this data into my search service. Uh, I can use an index on that so I could have that run every time a new file went into that. I've just done it as a one off, pulled all those documents out. And there I have a nice index of 292 documents of those downloads. And I can say, let's have a look for SharePoint Premium. And that will go and query, bring me some details. I can see that it's pulled back from session. I mentioned the cognitive service. With that cognitive service, I can do things like add locations. So it's pulled out from this session all the locations mentioned, all the organizations, even the people mentioned um, within that particular session and picked out key phrases. And that will all help your search to, to be higher quality and work a little bit better. Uh, and David, yes, I am keeping an eye on time and should be finished very quickly now. Um, oops. Um, so going along from there, once I've got that, I could then pull this out and wrap this up with Azure OpenAI. So here I've got the chat pro, uh, track playground. I've added my own data on it, um, except it's removed it. So just to very quickly show you that once you've got your AI search, you can select that service. You select that index that was created. You can acknowledge that. You could have enabled the vector search. Um, one of the future blog posts I'd like to do is what the difference is and compare those to see how it makes sense, whether you need to spend that extra money um, within there as well. Once you've got that, you map out your index. So I've given the file name. I think I gave that the session code. The title I gave is a session title. And I just added when I created that index, a couple of combined things that gave me a URL for that. Um, I'm going to keep that as keywords on there again, keeping the cost down because I started burning through too many of my credits. And now instead of whereas before I could ask SharePoint Premium, but I couldn't ask who is talking about SharePoint Premium. I would just get a load of the same sort of thing and it wouldn't tell me too much. Now, by putting it in Azure OpenAI, I can ask it questions that I can get more specific and see who those key people are. Now I'm doing this as a live demo. <laughs> oh, you see, it's picked up one and hasn't picked up that answer. Um, let me go back to uh, one of the other phrases that I tested before and should come up. Um, if anyone's got any questions, uh, I'm happy to try that. Um, I'm going to do a slightly corporate one. I do apologize, but just because I knew this work, who from Avenard spoke at Ignite? I know we had a couple of people uh, there talking within the session. So because I've identified those, it's using those transcripts. It's pulling that information so I can see that we had the global lead for digital ethics was there. I can start to ask those questions. Now, because I'm out of time, I'm very going to quickly just show this and talk about the problems. I wanted to bring Teams AI into this. But as you'll see, if I, uh, I've built up the Teams AI, I've put the uh, that same as your open AI key into that. At the moment, from what I understand, and I need to dig into this a little bit more, it's not pulling that external data. And when I go and ask, it's just asking the standard large language model on there. And apparently SharePoint doesn't have a premium service. Um, so yeah, we need to go and have a word with Mr. Teeper about that uh, and find out where that comes. But the next phase, and I, I hope to share a little bit more on this uh, on a, in a blog post and in a video on there, would be to bring this open. I tried it with Copilot Studio, um, coming back very quickly to the playground. There's a lovely button here that says deploy to power virtual agent bot. It's a lovely button, but it doesn't work that well at the moment. So I'm hoping that now it's within there. I could build an app around this, but I'm hoping that Teams AI library has now got a bit more of that reference and I'll be able to include that and share that out more with people at bot. So what did uh, I learn from this? 
just wrap up those and I'm hoping David's had some of the links in the chat. Um, make sure you check your costs before you turn these things on at scale. Do that for a few things and make sure you understand the costs and don't expect that to appear in the portal straight away. I did find actually that some of the uh, sessions didn't have title codes and things like that. So as with all co-pilots, as with a lot of AI, check your data governance, check your validation that your data is correct out there. Also have a think, I just threw that data in. I didn't really think about what questions I wanted to ask. And when I did, I had to go back and kind of add information like what was the session code and what was the other information on there. So think about what you want to ask with it and also be be prepared to iterate fast. These, this environment is changing so quickly. There's so many new features. Make the most of those within that and be able to prepare to jump with those. As the new versions of Teams AI come out that has more capabilities, there'll be less that you need to do yourself. But otherwise, thank you very much, David. I did overrun. I knew I would. Uh, and apologies to the other speakers. Uh, and I'll jump over to the chat and see if there are any questions in there. Otherwise, thank you. No problem. Thank you, Kevin. And and uh, just everyone, including our next upcoming speakers, don't worry about time. We'll stay long and get it recorded. We want to make sure that you're comfortable. Uh, we got two brand new presenters, or actually three brand new presenters. Uh, uh, we've got a duet as our last one. So without any further ado, let's go into Ania on using Microsoft Forms to get all submitted answers at once. Feel free to take it on over. Thank you, David. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. Yep, it's locked and loaded. Take it away. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, well, hello everyone and uh, welcome to my first, I uh, hope you can only see uh, only the presentation. Can you also see the yeah, we, chat popping we, up? Yeah, we can see those. Yeah, if you're in Windows, you yeah. can just yeah, turn on second. your uh, focus second. mode. Give me a second. It's on uh, actually, but uh, I don't know why it's complaining. So let me try it again. Actually, it's on focus mode. OK, I think you're good. I just threw a test in the chat, so okay, awesome. let's restart. Take awesome. it away. Thank you very much. And hello, everyone, and welcome to my first session of the year and also my first session at the PNP calls. So wish you also from my side, uh, everyone, a happy new year. I think uh, this week is a deadline for where we can say that. After next week, uh, nobody wants to hear that anymore. So um, yeah, happy new year. And um, my session is not about AI Copilot or ChatGPT related, so I'm sorry about that. And um, yeah, um, but let me know that what color you are so that I can get a feeling after the presentation that was a wrong decision or not. So yeah, my session is about Microsoft Forms and why I think that Microsoft Forms is an awesome uh, way to, to, to gather data and to, to, to share the data with, with other people or maybe to store the data in other places. And uh, maybe also show you how you can uh, proceed with, to, with that data and also what you can do with that data later on. But first, let me get rid of uh, the least important part of this presentation, talking a little bit about me and uh, who I am. So my name is Anja Lichai. Uh, I'm 32 years old. And um, if someone's curious where, where I come from for, because of that weird name, I was born in Albania. I grew up in Greece and I moved to Germany in 2010. So I've been living there since since then. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer uh, still, I think. A new email has not come yet. And uh, I also call, well, like to call myself a content creator sometimes uh, since uh, I create a video once in a while, I have our YouTube, YouTube channel. And um, I'm not a crazy expert on a specific topic on the Power Platform, but um, because I see myself like a like a butterfly flying in the, in the Microsoft garden, uh, specifically the Power Platform garden, and uh, trying all the flowers there. So uh, you will find many, many different topics in there. So yeah, um, that's 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 from me. And uh, yeah, also what I forgot is uh, what what actually pays the bills is my work as a Power Platform consultant at at uh, Nova Capta. We are a Microsoft partner company, and uh, yeah, we do everything around Microsoft. So if you want to check that as well, you can use the QR codes on the screen and uh, and take a look. Yeah, so that's it about me. So let's take a look uh, about the agenda today. I forgot to start my timer. 
And uh, yeah, so I'm going to use um, a Microsoft form uh, to to submit some data. So that that's nothing nothing complicated. Then uh, we're going to see how we can use the request uh, the HTTP request to SharePoint action in Power Automate, which I discovered a couple of months ago that you can use for retrieving all of the uh, the Microsoft Forms data at once. And um, then we can see how we can manipulate the data because it does not come in that uh, nicely formatted way that we are familiar with in, in Power Automate. And um, just for demonstration purposes, we are going to save the data then in a SharePoint list, but it's not uh, mandatory or you can save them whatever you want. And um, I'm also going to show you as a quick theoretical overview of what you can do then with that data since uh, the time's pretty limited. And uh, I was inspired by um, by Christine, for example, YouTube, where it, she showcased that you can start by creating an Excel file in a SharePoint library and then create the form from that Excel file. So you have then directly that source, which you can then connect to a Power BI report and then start visualize the data uh, and refresh that every day. So you always have the, the newest data from your forms responses. And um, there's also another way where you can directly connect to the Office um, Office API, so the forms.office.com API um, from, from Power BI by using the um, get data from, from web option and also the option to connect to the SharePoint list that we are going to uh, see today. But um, yeah, that's, that's the easiest one. Okay, so let me uh, switch to the demo. I will have to stop that sharing and change to that other screen. A second. Okay, let me know if you can see again. I think you should yep, be able looks to great. see again. Awesome. Um, is it uh, big enough or should I zoom in a little bit? Let me know. Uh, zoom in, yeah, that, that looks good. Zoom in, good. Yep. Okay, awesome. So I've just created here very simple, uh, very simple forms, uh, just just to save us some time. Uh, it's, I call it a company card. I have here a couple of uh, options that you, the user will be able to select. And then uh, we have here also um, a SharePoint list uh, made ready because I think this is very time consuming. And I assume you know how to create the forms and, and a SharePoint list. So I'm going to skip that and save you the time. And uh, what we are going to do is I'm going to go, I'm already in the preview mode of this form, so what the user will be able to see. And I'm going to go to the to the developer tools because here's where um, actually uh, you can grab that URL that you need to, uh, to do the HTTP request. So let me fill this out real quick uh, with some uh, data. Let's see here. Uh, let's say it's a user selecting the company car. I want it in three months, which is very optimistic. And uh, then you can go to the in the developer tools. Uh, let me make it a bit bigger. In the network section, make sure it's, it's empty. And after clicking send, you will see here a couple of API uh, requests being sent and being received. So you have here this responses uh, section uh, one. And then if you make it a little bit wider, you can see here that this is the URL that you send to the API so that you can get the responses. What happens if you copy that and paste it in the browser that you used to create that, since you need that token, you will see that you have here all the responses that um, that have been yeah that have been submitted. So this is, does not look very pretty. But if you use here one of my favorite tools to visualize that, you will see that um, yeah. Here are all the responsive with with IDs, start date, submit date. Many many of you might um, might want to know how long that uh, that uh, form took for the user to complete, and also because I've activated uh, for the internal submission of those um, of those um, of those forms, I can also see the responder email and the display name, no, the, the name of course, and here is where all the answers are saved. So 
if we uh, can take a look into this one, it's called answers. We have these key, uh, key value pairs here. And in the answers uh, key, we have these values with our answers. Now, here's, these are all called answer one for some reason. And we have here, um, Max is one of the answers I, I took. Let's let's grab the last one, the newest one, uh, which I just completed, which is this one here. And I just wrote my name and uh, my last name and so on and so forth. So we have that, that, that question ID and then also the, the answer. Huh? So here are all the answers. So the problem with this is that we cannot just extract it in this form so it's a bit um, it's a bit difficult to grab that uh, that easily from power automate but it's it's uh, one or two steps more that we need to do that so let's let's see how we can achieve that so first uh, i'm going to do it with an instant cloud flow because i want to manually trigger it now but you can do it in a scheduled flow you can do it whatever however you like maybe combine it with another flow like um like a child flow, a parent child flow, and so on and so forth. So this is just for inspirational purposes. Now, what you do with it is up to you, of course. No, I don't want here. And let's call it, um, let's call it, let's call it uh, get all data. Uh, laughing because how David presented it earlier. And um, yeah, welcome to the new designer. No, I don't want to copilot now. Thank you. So I'm going to create a new action called send a HTTP request to SharePoint. And there it is. Uh, the cool thing about this is also that it's included. I mean, it's, it's not a premium connector. No? That's that's the awesome part. You don't need to use, you don't have to use the, the, the premium HTTP um, send HTTP request connector. So that's the good part. And uh, if you go back to our uh, developer tool here and copy this one and go back to Power Automate, and you need to, need to leave it as a get method now because we're getting the data, of course, and paste it in the URI. What you need to remove is this part here because that goes into the site address. No? Here it's uh, automatically um, requesting the Maybe I need to zoom in a little bit. He's automatically requesting the, the, the SharePoint sites that you have you know, so to, to pick up the list, uh, but you can enter a custom value and that's where you paste your um, forms.office.com um, as a site address. Okay, so let's let's save it real quick and test it out. So let's manually test it. Okay, run the flow. And we can see here in the row outputs that we have our um, submitted forms. Huh? And as I said, we need to grab these answers here. So what I did is um, because we cannot access this answer section here, we directly from this HTTP request response, we need to pass a JSON with, we need to pass this JSON in a, a pass JSON action. So the, for that reason, I'm going to copy this real quick, not from the button, and create in edit mode, a new action, alt pass JSON. And the content will be coming from the body from this HTTP request. And then I'm going to generate that schema here and it should be good to go. Okay, so next is that we need to create, uh, apply to each because we have to go through each of those responses and grab that uh, information that's in there. And here we are going to use this body value from our parse JSON. And inside of our apply to each, we are going to do a compose action where we are going to split that um, that um, answers string in in the in the quotation mark section. So if you take a look here again, we have no here that's not a good one. We have here these quotation marks. 
And since we, when we count with split function, we start by zero, we say that split it on the zero, one, two, three, no, zero, one, two, three section and give me then the text. So that's an AR. And if I want the next one, uh, which is the last name, then I will have again to add the number of quotation marks that are before that. I've tested it a couple of times, maybe 50 times, and it doesn't matter what answers you have, it doesn't matter how many answers you have, every answer is after it starts, the first answer is after the third quotation, and everything else you need to add an eight to that split function. So you can test it out, but trust me on this. So let me copy that split um, function real quick so I don't, don't lose much time. And to keep that time on my track. And uh, that's going to be a function. So, okay, so what I do here is I split these items applied to each answers uh, by the third one for the first answer. The reason why I also have to write it here is because in the dynamic content, uh, these items uh, answers, uh, I cannot find them here, I think, or maybe it's coming from here. Anyways, I, I sometimes I feel it's safer if I just write it by myself. Okay, so this is now for uh, compose get first name. So this is our first compose action. And uh, for everybody else uh, who was wondering uh, where the copy to clipboard uh, option went, it's there. You just need to right click on that action and then you can copy that. So I'm going to paste it there. And um, I need to change this then. So I'm adding eight. And this is then my 11th um, quotation. So I'm going to update this to rename this to copy, uh, compose, get last name. And if I may test it real quick, manually test it. we see that we got eight responses. So this might take a while, depending on how many responses you get. Maybe there's a better way to do it. So feel free to reach out to me later if you have a greater, better idea. I'm happy to, to uh, take a look as well. But um, yeah, so if we take a look inside here, we have the first option, uh, the first response, sorry, which has here the, the, the output, the name, and then it's here, the uh, it's the same one because Maybe I wrote uh, crap in that. Let's see again. Here's my first name. Uh, yeah, I did not update that one here, I think. Yeah, I left it to three. I need to update it. Update. So if I test it again. Run flow, done. Go to the last one. It has my last name and the first one has And while that's first, loading, just a, a time it check. It has my first time. It was loading. Yeah, I I'm just too fast for my power to me at the moment. So mm -hmm. yeah. So if we continue and paste that, let's call this. Uh, so we're at eleven. Let's go to nineteen, and and so on and so forth. So that was uh, employee ID. And ju just a time check for you, Neil. We still have to do the third presentation, so just yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm not going to do anything, all of this. I'm just going to c close it at, at this part and don't have to go through all of these uh, columns. And you, you got the point. So so I'm going to um, say okay. So each of these runs, each of these apply to each runs. What we can do here is we can go and say uh, create item or do whatever else you, you might think it's it's more uh, useful. And then you can, um, here's my list, which is called company car order, show all. And then you can go and enter all of those, um, all of those entries in your SharePoint list. 
Yeah, so so that's it from for for this for this demonstration and how you can grab that information from um, from this API call. And uh, yeah, what you can do else is then after after having the data in your SharePoint list, you can of course go and grab the data from here. And I also wanted to show real quick um, the option of. Um, I have it here. So if you are in in a documents library, you can start from forms from Excel, which creates test, which creates an Excel file in this document library, and then it automatically pops up this form. And so you can use this Excel file as a connection to your Power BI you know, to to demonstrate the data. And also my last uh, demonstration is uh, let's go to my here, this one. If you have, let's go in the display. If you, no, not in display, let's go in the answers. So here are also the answers and clean this console again. If you want to open this in Excel, it is also showing here this uh, other API call, which is called Form API Download Excel File. And this, if you paste this in your URL, uh, in your uh, browser, sorry. If you paste it there, it will automatically download the Excel. But what you can also do is you can go here and say from web and then paste it in here. And the rest is uh, a demo from, from uh, BI Elite, which uh, David might have posted already in the, in the chat. And he explains how you can then directly use that uh, Excel file for the data. That's it for me. Back to you, David. Awesome, Ania. Thank you. This is super slick. I, I really appreciate it. And again, a lot of love to Ania. This is first time, uh, so we know that sometimes things happen on time-wise. So really great job. Um, John and Mike, you okay to stay? We can stay longer if you want to show it off, get it recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Let's kick it off. Okay. I'm here for uh, for the long haul. But I'm only staying till oh. midnight, though, so as long as... Uh, okay. <laughs> well, just, just you know, it would be nice if, uh, nice if the rest of our friends stay there as well. That'd be good. Uh, yeah. So uh, my name is John Russell. I'm joined by uh, Mike Gowland. Uh, we both are Power Platform Configuration Consultants at ANS, and uh, we're going to do uh, a bit of a demo of our uh, solution that we call Just Ask It, which is uh, to do with OpenAI and uh, model-driven app. Uh, Mike, do you want to say hello? Hi. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm John's better half. <laughs> Yeah, John's about half. Okay, so um, we're we're gonna go. We're gonna just jump straight into the demo because uh, I think the the power the, the power of this is really the demo. So we've got a pretty kind of standard model driven app. Um, we can create requests. We can create new prompts. We can get responses back from those prompts. We've got some configuration around rules and all this kind of and prompt rules, etc. Um, and what we can do is. Um, the way that the way that this came about was that uh, a solution architect uh, in in our team, who I think is on the call, um, asked me at about like half four on a Friday afternoon, um, could I come up with a domain specific example for a water utility company so that I could run a Dataverse lab with them uh, in a couple of weeks' time? Um, and I do know a little bit about some domains, um, but not not all of them. Um, so I, I kind of started getting into the um, AI rabbit hole after watching um, Donna Sarka's South Coast Summit um, uh, keynote. And yeah, Mike, we, we, we kind of like bumped heads together, really, didn't we? Yeah. Um, so um, what we've what we built is um, a way to um, ask a large language model uh, to help us basically as Power Platform consultants. So if I click on uh, make a request and I've got a water utility specific um, uh, example that I can ask, which is basically saying, can you provide me with a Dataverse schema and concentrate on site inspections? We can then pass that through to our Dataverse entity relationship diagram prompt. Um, we can give it a bit of temperature. Um, I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, and then we can submit the request. And then if Mike shares his screen, yeah. um, he'll be able to show you what's happening in the flow in the background. Sure. So I'm not going to show you the uh, live flow happening, but I will just talk through the uh, flow that we have um, now, and I'll just uh, just go through what's actually happening. So John creates his request, 
Uh, that gets picked up by the flow as a uh, added or modified field in a table. Uh, we then go and get the prompt that's associated that uh, John associated previously. Uh, so that was the database, uh, the dataverse ERDV2 prompt. That prompt also has a model. So uh, we also collect the model as well. We could probably do a little bit more clever things with fetch XML there, but um, is what it is. Uh, we then get the temperature that's set on the uh, request. And in this case, if the temperature hasn't been specified, we force a, a temperature of 0 0.7, which gives us sort of like a kind of like just sl slightly towards a creative side of balanced. Um, the temperature is a scale of 0 to 1, and it will determine how deterministic or how creative your large language model is going to be. So if you've used Bing chat before, and I think I can just bring it up on the, the side there, potentially you can see you've got that slider there for a more precise, more creative and more balanced. That's exactly what you're setting when, when we talk about temperature. Uh, moving on, uh, we then have some rules. I'll get you out of the way, John, sorry. Um, we then have some rules that are either mandatory rules that we apply to every single prompt and request, or there are prompt specific rules that we can write specifically for certain prompts. What we're doing in uh, these actions here is we're actually collecting those together. And at the end, we actually join them together. And now we do something a little bit clever here. If we have lots of rules for one of our prompts, that could take us over some tokenization limits on the large language model. So what we do is we actually use GPT 3.5 Turbo to summarize all of those rules into some more concise text. So that reduces the amount of text and likewise reduces the amount of tokens that we're going to consume by sending the rules over. So we get GPT 3.5 Turbo to do that first. Um, I appreciate I'm sort of scrolling through the screen probably a little bit quickly, so uh, apologies for that. We then start to look at actually making our request. And our request is going to be a combination of the context and the purpose, and these are defined at the prompt level. So that's the database ERDV2 prompt that John selected in the request, followed by our condensed rules that come back from GPT 3.5 Turbo. We're then ready to actually make our request to the large language model uh, to uh, fulfill the initial request that we we set out to make. We get the model from uh, the prompt. It's defined there. We give it our system message. And then to actually trigger this, we also pass a user message. And the user message just contains that request text that John filled in about the water utility company. Uh, we set the, uh, the temperature. We set the max tokens as well at that point. Uh, it goes off and does that request. Now, what our solution does is when we generate the ERD schema, we also generate a mermaid.js diagram. And mermaid.js is like a markdown language to be able to create things like flow charts. Uh, it does ERD diagrams, uh, it does quadrant charts, that sort of thing. What we do then is we now get another large language model to just extract the mermaid.js diagram from that response that we get. So you can see here, we've got an example of what one looks like. Uh, this is where, where we give the large language model context and we say, well, actually, you're going to get this and we want you to just take this out. OK, um, and then we trigger that with a user message and then again, send that to the large language model and that will return just the markdown language, uh, the, mark, the markdown chart that's actually in the initial response. Uh, once we get to that stage, we then just do some calculations to so token costs. So we calculate input and output tokens uh, and then we go and create a new response row. And I think if I've been talking long enough, John, that should now be ready to view fingers it has, it, live it demo has of indeed. Under God's it blessings. has indeed. So um, here we have our response down here, which we can double click. Um, as Mike said, it's telling us how much it's cost. So it's cost us 11p um, uh, cent tells us how many tokens. Um, there's my request. And there is the response text. So it's telling me the Dataverse schema. So a sites table, inspectors table, inspections table, issues table, site types, the relationships. Then it's provided us with the Mermaid.js markdown language, which we have then sent to uh, the JavaScript to the JavaScript on here. And that has provided us with an ERD. So the, the the key thing with all of this um, is that not everyone 
no one knows everything right no one knows no one knows all domains no one knows um no one knows every specific part of a domain but you could use this and say you're on a pre-sales call with a customer with a client and they're like okay so i'm a uh, aircraft manufacturer what are what can we build in dataverse and you could just ask them for a couple of couple of couple of questions and this becomes your starting point for that conversation not only not only is it is it, you know it's pretty it's pretty confident that it's coming back with accurate information and the ERD is pretty accurate, but it it is kind of building rapport with the client, showing you showing what a model driven app can do as well as you know the ability to talk to OpenAI and get this response back. Um, but there are there are uh, there are other bits to this as well, which um, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to hand back over to Mike for the last part. So I've got another flow to show everyone. So if you looked at the initial flow I showed you, you'll notice that what we were doing was very deterministic. So we were doing that prompt and then we were just checking for the Mermaid JS diagram. Now, with this solution, our, our kind of goal for this is to make this more data driven and to make it more customizable. So uh, we want the ability to people for people to take this solution, and actually write their own prompts and You'll also see what we did before is where we started to string large language models together and request and use different model types to do different functions. Uh, that actually makes us, uh, it starts to become quite powerful. So what we're working on at the moment to enhance Just Ask It is to actually have data-driven prompts. So we have the concept of a parent prompt and then we have child prompts below that. That prompt that John just ran uh, is one of our child prompts that just does that ERD generation. So the way we do that, uh, I've, uh, this is a, a complete proof of concept that I started working on a few days ago, uh, but this is just a trial run just to show you what this actually does. Uh, we get our parent prompt. We have our child prompts linked to that uh, parent prompt. And what we do is we then iterate through those child prompts and we, again, we do this thing where we, we're conscious of things like token limitization, uh, token limits on, on large language models. So we'll actually start off by uh, condensing the current conversation. And I'll first show you run two there. Um, we're actually condensing the conversation down to system and user into an array. Um, let's go back to the first one quickly. Um, we will then get the specific model that's used in that prompt. We will define what the token limits are for that model. Um, we'll check whether the payload we think is going to exceed that token limit. So we just do some very quick maths on that. There isn't uh, a better way with Power Automate that I've seen to do that token count cost unless we use an API, but I have to look closer at the, look more into that. Uh, we then do that same step again where we get the rules and we actually merge those rules together. Um, and then after that, we actually do our chat completion. So we're going to send that request. We're going to get the response back, which in this case is that ERD diagram. Um, but it's, it's actually just the ERD schema. And then what we do is we actually capture that and reuse it again and again. So we go to the next prompt. The next prompt already has the context of what we've already asked it. And then it will continue. So this second prompt is actually going to uh, generate the mermaid JS diagram, which we can see here. And then we have a third prompt that will then extract that mermaid JS diagram. And finally, we have a fourth prompt that says, okay, with all of that in mind, now generate me some user stories. And we can see here, we've got, uh, it, we can't see it very clearly. I don't know if I could do the raw outputs in it might show you better it does not but we actually have a html table here that lists out the different personas a user story and a, and a point score that goes against each one so we've got customer we've got airline staff uh, it just goes through it just creates those examples so by doing this by doing this uh, prompt orchestration you can actually build uh, add more skills and functionality into your initial prompt and you can have it rather than just do that erd diagram you can have it do much more so in this case, we're we're also adding user stories to that. We could also do things like um, actually map out Power Automate flows that might be used for the solution. Um, could potentially even look at doing some wireframing with it as well. So um, there's quite a lot of possibilities that we can take uh, we can take on with this. Uh, so that's really where we're where we're going with Just Ask It. And 
uh, is currently on GitHub uh, in a sort of pre-release stage. And we're looking to have our first release sort of around the beginning of February, where we'll actually have this functionality built in. Uh, just to go back over to you, John. Yeah, nice one. Thanks a lot, Mike. Yeah, so it's it's like as Mike said at the start, it's it's been a pleasure working with Mike on this because we kind of we kind of complement each other really well, um, and it's been really nice getting it getting into the weeds with it. Um, I think another 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 area that I think potentially this could be used for um, is um, you know as 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 part of our cons consultant toolkit. Say you have a teams you have a teams call with the client. It's recorded. You've got the transcript pass the transcript through through the large language model and then spit out all of these different pieces, whether that's user stories or user journeys, um, et cetera, et cetera. And really then you're kind of getting it from, from the source without any translation issue or um, assumptions made, et cetera, because it's coming direct from the client. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll pop up our, um, uh, I'll pop up our initial slide deck so you can see um, the QR codes for us and the GitHub link. And yeah, that's that's it from us. Awesome stuff, John and Mike. Really, really appreciate it. Um, also, those links are in the chat there, everybody, if you would like to take a look at them now. Uh, and we'll, of course, for those watching on the video, we will have them in the video description for everybody to take advantage of. So thank you uh, both so much. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, thank you to all of our presenters, Kevin, Ania, John, Mike. We had a uh, quadrant of amazing stuff today so thank you all uh, just to wrap everything up we've got some resources that are available to you all in the community we've got our discord uh, well over a thousand now so take advantage of getting involved there it's a great kind of one-stop shop to be able to talk about a number of community topics that you can collaborate with everybody in the community on so really really cool place and we'd like some feedback. So if uh, if you're enjoying the call uh, and or you're not enjoying the call, you want to see some improvements or you are enjoying it, you want to see more of what we're already doing, let us know. Let's our management know that uh, you are doing great uh, or that we are doing great. And we already know you're doing great. You're all doing awesome. Uh, so we appreciate the feedback that you can provide. Uh, and uh, thank you. Okay, recording will be available in 24 hours on the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community YouTube channel. You can get access to these videos at ak.ms slash community slash videos. Make sure you subscribe and you'll be alerted as soon as it drops. Uh, smash that hammer or sm <laughs> smash that subscribe button, as they say, uh, with a hammer and you can uh, get alerted. If you're not in Microsoft, you're going to see an alert that says the recording is available to watch. It's lying to you. It's not unless you're a Microsoft employee. So uh, subscribe to those accounts to get the latest and greatest. You can Follow us on X or Twitter uh, at M365PNP. I see the latest updates at uh, ak.ms slash community slash li for LinkedIn. The next call for the Power Platform and Microsoft 365 dev call will be January 18th, two weeks from today. Our Viva Connection SharePoint framework next week, January 11th, back every Thursday, as we mentioned. Get access to all these calls at aka.ms slash community slash calls. Thank you, everybody, for all your passion that you bring. It's going to be a great year here in 2024. We are excited to, to showcase all the amazing work that you're doing. So we can't thank you enough. Have a wonderful rest of your week and a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.